Ephesians chapter 6. And I've been really blessed by this series in my own personal life because I've been really getting into this and really um, diving deep into these scriptures and into the meaning of what Paul was writing. And so this is something that I've been wanting, this was a series that I had been wanting to do for a while. This series is something that God had really placed in my heart about six months ago, maybe even seven months ago, where, where I was really desiring to do the armor of God. And it all came from um, actually listening back through messages of ours. And Becky preached on this. And what was it? Your, your, our first Mother's Day here? So, I don't know, two, two and a half years ago? Something like that. She preached on the armor of God, and I was, I was going through some of the old sermons that we had, and I, I stumbled upon it, and it was about, like I said, seven months ago. And I was listening to it, and God just placed it on my heart to do this series because it's something that we need to have in our lives, is that we need to be equipped. We need to, as saints, be equipped. You know, so many times, so often, it's easy for us as Christians just to be like, I'm a Christian, I'm ready to go. And while that is somewhat true, while we have the presence and the Spirit of God living inside of us, we also need to be seeking after the Lord and allowing Him to equip us, to change us, to motivate us, to challenge us to what He has for us. And that's why I feel like this, the armor of God is so important for this time, this day and age, because if you're unaware, Christians are becoming less and less popular in our world today i see a lot of heads nod because you see it as well as i do that christianity the calling the the desire to follow after god is becoming less and less popular and i'm going to tell you something and this is something that i firmly believe with all of my heart that as we grow closer and closer to when jesus returns persecution of the church will get greater and greater and greater that's not something that's my opinion that's the bible the Bible talks about this, that the times will grow evil and the days will grow darker. And this is something that we have to be prepared for. You know, here in America, we have enjoyed a long history, a long history of, uh, of spiritual and religious freedom. We have, and it's wonderful and it's beautiful. And I thank God for it all the time. But it's something also that we as Christians, we can become very, very lax with. It can lull us into a place where we just feel okay. Where we just feel like, oh, we're good. We're happy. But this is something that I really believe that God is calling us to do is to, like we, like we have, suit up. Get ready for what God is calling us to do. Now, I'm not saying we need to suit up for persecution. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. But in our everyday lives, in our lives, in our walk with Jesus Christ, I don't want to ever step foot into this world throughout my life without being touched by the Lord, without being fully equipped by what He has for me. And that's why as a church I wanted to go through these things and I wanted to look at them. And so we've actually gone through almost all of them. We only have a couple more weeks left of the armor of God. But we're going to go ahead and look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20 as we look at the sword of the Spirit today. It says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. 
Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we just come right now as a body and we just ask for you to speak into our lives. Lord, we are desperate for you. We are a people in need of you. And so God, I pray that this morning as we look at your word, as we allow it to challenge our lives and we allow it to take hold, God, I pray that you would give us a heart to receive, oh God, and a mind to understand. And Lord, I just pray that you would move through us, oh God. And Lord, that you would touch our lives. Lord, we ask for it today in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're looking at the sword of the Spirit which I have to admit is one that I have been looking forward to since the very beginning. I don't know if I say that every single week. It's pretty close to it. But it's one that I have been looking forward to since the very beginning of this whole series. We're talking about the sword of the Spirit. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 6, Paul is definitely Paul makes sure to explain what the sword of the Spirit is. He says, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so we're going to be looking at this today and what is the significance, what is the meaning behind the Word of God being the sword of the Spirit. And so today I wanted to look, first of all, just like we have been, at the soldier. The soldier and the sword. It's important to be able to look at the soldier and and the place that each piece of the armor held for him. Because we get a better understanding of what Paul was trying to convey and what message he was trying to reach out to us. And so I want us to understand something about the sword. The very first thing is that the sword was the most important tool for the soldier. Most important, bar none, this was the most important tool that the soldier had. The soldier needed the sword to be effective and to be safe. You know, if you could imagine this, if you go out into a battle with only your armor and just your shield... What, what, what are you going to be doing? Pretty much nothing, really. If, you're, if I'm honest, you're not going to be doing very much at all. You're going to be a, a defensive player. A defensive player. Now, when I was in football, I played football for a number of years, and I loved football. I loved it. It's my favorite sport, bar none. I loved defense. I loved defense because that was what I was good at. I, I was on defense, and my whole job was to stop the offense, I played the line because if you look at me, I'm not, I'm not built for running very far. And so I played defense, and I was really good at it. But I also played offense. I played the offensive line, and I always thought, ugh, offense. It's no fun. All you do is you just move people around, and that's it. That's all you do. But I thought about that this week as I was preparing for it, is that if we're never on the offensive, if we're never willing to take the next step, we're always either standing still or moving backwards. It's almost like if we're not willing to be on the offensive, we're in a constant state of retreat. And so that's why I feel like the sword is so important to the soldier. That is why this is the most effective tool. The sword was used for offense, offensive, for the offensive. You see, we all know the basics of a sword. We all understand a sword. You know, most little boys and, most, and some little girls, they like to pretend that they've got swords. They like to go out in the backyard and they pick up a stick and boom, it instantly becomes a sword. You know, some, and if you wave it fast enough, the stick might break, but that's not a very good sword. But we all know the basics of a sword. We all know the way that a sword works and how it functions. And that is what's so important about a soldier to have it is that they can use it to go on the offensive. That they don't have to stand still, that they don't have to just wait for the enemy to come to them, but rather that they are going out to the battle. They're going out to the battle. They're not just standing back and saying, oh man, this is going to be bad. But rather, they're going themselves. They're ready. They're ready. They're ready to use the sword to, to be able to battle, to make their way through the armies. And see, that's what one purpose of the sword. The other purpose of the sword is also one of protection. You see, if something is coming against you, the sword is also used to block that, to block that attack. And so not only is it for offensive, but it's also used for protection. It is also used for defense. 
And you so see, if the sword is extremely useful, it's extremely important to the soldier. Without it, they weren't a soldier. Without it, they, they were simply just a pedestrian, hoping and praying that they wouldn't be attacked. And so that's exactly what the sword is. That's what a sword does. Now, if we look at the second part of this, sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God. And I want to make sure that I, I pause just for a second because I want us to be able to understand something, that this holds a lot of weight, that this holds a lot of importance. When we talk about the it's not just something. You see, it's easy for us to really treat the Bible or treat God's Word as just something else in our lives. It's really easy to fall into that, that thinking because we have it everywhere. We have it everywhere. You know, if we were to pick up your phone, it's on your phone. I went through, and this week I wanted to count how many Bibles that I had in my office alone. Now, I do have one that I carry in my car all the time, but I wanted to carry, count how many Bibles I had in my office, and I had 17 Bibles in my office alone. All different, trans, or, all different versions and translations and, and all sorts of different things, and so I have 17 different Bibles. And it's easy for us to look at the Bible and say, well, yeah, it's the Bible. We know that. But I want us to understand something. The greatness of this for just a moment. The Word of God. The Word of God. How much power that holds. How much authority that holds. You see, in our lives, we need absolute truth. We do. We need an absolute truth. We need something that is able to point us in the right direction. You see, how many of you have ever used a compass before? Several of you have probably used a compass before. A compass always points which direction? North. True north. It always points north. And that gives us a reference on which way we should go. On how we should be able to, to walk and go. Because if a compass just pointed whichever way it wanted to, However it felt at the time, we wouldn't get very far. We'd be walking in probably the opposite direction or, you know, in a direction that's not even near where we're supposed to be going. But that is why we need absolute truth in our lives. Because if we did not have an absolute center of truth in our lives, an absolute true north for our spiritual lives, we'd be all over the place. Whatever would, be, whatever would be for us would be the right way. Whatever we would feel would be the right way. But here's where the Word of God comes in. Here's where God's Word steps in. Is God gave us His words for instruction and life. You see, God knew that we needed something that we could base our lives on. Something that we could have that points us to Him. And so He gave us His words. He gave us his words, and this is something that we have in our lives. And we should be willing to and desiring to instill it every chance that we get to. Becky and I, when we were dating, she went to, was it Kansas that you went on your trip to for a while? Basketball tournament? Kansas, yes. She went to Kansas for a basketball tournament. And I stayed at home. I was their loyal fan because I had a reason to go to every single game, and it was number 33. No, <laughs> but I would go to every single game that they had. Huh? We were engaged at the time. Oh, we were engaged. Even better. <laughs> she was a senior in high school, so I robbed the crate a little bit. No, I'm just teasing. But she, she was a senior in high school. We were engaged, and she was going to Kansas for a few days, four days. That's, that's all? Man, it seemed like forever. Goodness, she was going to Kansas for four days for this basketball tournament, and I couldn't go. I had to stay and work and do all these other things and couldn't go to Kansas. And so what we did is we wrote notes to each other. Instead of just calling each other, because our schedules probably weren't going to line up, and it was going to be really hard to find a time that she could call me, I could call her. And we didn't really text. That wasn't really a thing. 
it cost extra at the time, you know, it was like 15 cents per text, and you're like, Psh, it's not worth it. But I remember uh, we wrote these notes to each other, and we made a promise that we would open just those notes each day. So we did one for every single day, and we made puzzles for each other. I made a crossword puzzle for you, and I made a word search for you, and so we did these puzzles for each other. And I still have those notes. I still have them. They are very important to me. I hold them very dear to my heart. And I, when I, I remember that I would read them. And I would read them and I would treasure them. I would treasure them. And I understood her love for me. I understood her love for me. Even though she was hundreds of miles away in Kansas playing basketball, I was able to read these words and be able to say, man... This girl loves me. I don't understand why she loves me, no, no, but she loves me. And here's the thing. God's word is the very same thing. It is the exact same thing. It is God saying, I love you. I love you. And this is what I want you to know about me. This is what I want you to understand about me. This is the best way for you to live. This is the best that you can have in your entire life. Here it is. Here's my words before you. I want you to know me. I want you to get to know me. And you see, this is why it's so powerful. It's so empowering is because God's word can come in and it can do something other book no other thing in existence can do it can change us at our core it can change us at our core you see you can read all sorts of books and it can give you all sorts of good ideas i have read books on finances i have read books on leadership i have read books on how to read other books you've read as a pastor you read all sorts of different things but here's what I'm going to tell you. No book has ever done what the Bible can do. No book. No book can ever compare to the Bible. No book can change us. No book is alive and active. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You see, this, this is what the Bible is for us. This is what the Word of God is. Is it something that takes us and we're able to separate our thoughts, our feelings, our desires from truth? Because that's very important. It's very important to be able to say, what am I feeling versus what does God desire for me? What am I desiring versus what is God's will? Because this is something that is so very important. So very important in our lives is that we're able to see who God is and what he desires for us and how we should be willing to change. What do I need to do to look more like Jesus Christ? What do I need to do to line up with the word of God? What is it in my life that is missing the mark? What is it in my life that I'm not taking seriously? What is it in my life that I've kind of swept under the rug? The Word of God illuminates it. It says this. This is what I need to change. This is what I need to do to be closer to Him. This is what I need to do to live the life that He desires of me. And so that's what the sword and the Word of God, and so we combine them. And so what does it mean for our life today? What does this mean for us here and now? Because we understand this and we understand the, the sword, we understand the word of God, but how does it change us right now? What is it going to do for us today? And this is what I want to show us is that we need to be defending and moving. This is what the word of God is for us. And I want us to understand is what we just read, what we just looked at, Hebrews 4.12. If you want to flip back it one, one more time. I want to be able to look at this just for a quick second because I want to talk about what the Word of God is for us right now. You see, I love that first line, that first sentence, for the Word of God is alive and active. It's alive. It's alive. It is something that is moving, that is shaping us, that is changing us. See, it's not just words on a paper. 
That's not what the word of God is, is it's his words to us being able to change us, allow his presence to move inside of us, to give us a glimpse, a glimpse of who he is. You see, there's a lot of people who might say that the Bible is old, outdated, it's tired. In fact, I even heard that argument this week. This past week, I heard it from someone who said that the, the Bible is outdated, and they even said something along the lines of, they, we need to update the Bible. And I sat there and I was like, hold up. I don't think you understand what the Bible is then. Because the Word of God is alive. It's not something that needs to be uh, brought up to the times. It's not something that needs to be changed. It's not something that needs to be able to say, well, I don't like this part. So let's just... Let's, let's just brush that aside. Let's get rid of that. You see, that's dangerous. That's a dangerous place to be in is whenever we have these moments where we say, I, you know what, that doesn't apply to me. I don't like that part. Gone. See, the Word of God is alive and active. Active means it's moving in us. And so that means the Bible doesn't need to be changed, but rather I need to be changed. I'm the one. I'm the one who is imperfect. I am the one who is flawed. I am the one who needs a Savior. It's me. I'm the first to raise my hand because I know. I know that I need a Savior. I know that I need a Redeemer. And that's exactly who He is. And that's exactly what He has given to us in the Bible. So you can go ahead and go next. Because here's what I want us to look at is how the Word of God, what it does in our lives. And so the first thing that we see is that the Word of God defends us. That the, what the Bible can do to defend us. You see, the first thing that I want us to, to see and to know and to understand is that it gives us peace in troubled times. It gives us peace. It allows us to see God's hand even in the worst of times. Even in the worst of times, we still understand God's peace. I'm going to share a story with you. Several years ago, a couple weeks before Christmas in 2011, I, I lost a dear friend of mine. His name was Cody. And Cody died in a car accident, and I get the call that he had died. And I didn't know, I, I, I was sitting in our, in our living room in West Lafayette, and I get this call, and they said, uh, Cody passed away in a car accident. It just happened. And I sat there for just a second, and I told Becky... And we knelt down at our couch right there and we started to pray. And all I knew, I didn't, I didn't have any words to say. All I could think of was when Job went through the same thing. He said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but I will choose to bless the name of the Lord. And that's all I could say. You see, the word of God, even in my troubled times, even at the worst moment, gave me peace. Gave me peace because I understood that he was still in control. And that's something that we need to rest on to be able to say, God, I don't understand, but I know who you are. I don't get what's going on around me, but I do know who you are in my life. And I'm going to turn towards you. The next thing that it does is it gives us a pro his promises to stand on. You see, we know some that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That as we walk through this life, that we know that He is right there beside us. That He is with us. That He is guiding us. That he is, that he is showing us the way. The promises that we have that we will never be snatched from His hand. The promises that we have that He will return. You see, all of these promises are something that we can stand on every single day. And especially when we don't feel Him. You see, as a pastor, I am all too aware of the, of the idea of the sometimes that we don't feel close to God. There's lots of times. I've been there myself where I just don't feel close to God. But in the same kind of respect, there are times that we feel distant from each other. There are times that we feel like we just need to reconnect and do something different. And here's what I'm going to tell you is that the Word of God still stands. 
even when we feel far away from God, the word of God still stands in our lives, and we can go to it. We can go to him and say, God, would you speak to me today? Would you show me who you are through your word? Even though right now I feel dry, even though right now I feel tired, would you show me who you are for me? The next way that it defends us is it helps us fight against sin and temptation. You see, we can stand firm against sin and the things that drag us down, the things that tear us away when we put the Word of God into our lives. When we put God's Word into our lives. See, the Bible is very clear. It says, it is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. It lets us know where we need to be going. I wasn't going to say this, but I really feel like God is speaking to this, is that we need to take real consideration of this point right here, of sin in our lives. It's not something that we should ever play with. It's not ever something that we should let go. That the moment we see sin starting to creep in, we have to say, enough, and go to God's Word. You see, our lives, we want to be filled with something. We want to be filled. We, we, we are created with a hole in our heart. We're created this way where we desire something more. And you see, what we're supposed to desire is God. But all too often, our flesh gets in the way and we desire the things of this world. And that's where we allow sin to take the place of of God and this is something that I want to share is do not do not allow sin to take hold of you do not allow sin to keep a hold instead of going after sin go after the word of God fill your heart with his word fill your life with his word fill your steps every single step with what he says And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that sin cannot stand in His presence. It can't stand in His way because He is greater than all sin. He has conquered sin and the grave. And that is something that we can stand on. And so do not allow sin to creep in. If you see it with something in your life, if you see it, go before God. And go before others as well. See, I'm not one to judge anybody for their sins. I'm not one to sit there and say, well, tisk, tisk, tisk on you. Because I know that we're all fallen. I know that we're all sinners saved by grace. Find somebody that you can share with and say, I need your prayers with this. I need your help with this. I can't go alone. I need somebody to stand with me. Because sin is something that we cannot, cannot tolerate in our lives. We can't tolerate it. Second thing that I want us to look at is, besides the Word of God defends us, is that the Word of God allows us to move forward. Move forward. It, it allows us to move in our relationship with us. And this, is, and this is something that I want us to see is that it propels us to a new place with God. Our relationship with God would just be stagnant, would just be a defensive position if we didn't have the Word of God in our lives. And this is why I wanted to share the story of the soldier first is because I want us to understand why the Word of God is so important in our lives and what happens if you as a Christian forsake the Word of God. Is that just like a soldier is not a soldier without the sword, a Christian is strongly, strongly missing the mark if we do not put the Word of God into our lives. Now I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. Do not... Do not take that away from today. I simply want to encourage you. I simply want to encourage you because we know that there is no condemnation for those who are found in Christ Jesus. We know that there is no condemnation, so I am not condemning a single person today. I am simply encouraging us, get into the Word of God. Because as Christians, as Christians, if we aren't taking up the Word of God, all we're doing is just waiting for the next attack. All we're doing is just waiting for that next moment. All we're doing is we're just saying, okay, God, when are you coming back? I can't move forward. I can't go anywhere. I just need you to take me. You see, but this, the Word of God allows us to do something 
much, much greater in our lives. It allows us to go into a deeper place with Him, a deeper commitment with Him. This is something extremely powerful. Extremely powerful where God is able to do great things in our lives. To do great things in our lives. The first thing that it does is it gives us strength to move through the day. It's called our daily bread for a reason. It's called our daily bread for a reason. It gives us the nourishment, the strength that we need for every single day. For every single day to be able to wake up and stand up and say, okay, let's go get it. We need the Word of God. We need His Word in our lives to be able to give us that strength. Just as if you didn't eat for a couple of days, or let's just even say three or four days, you'd feel weak, you'd feel tired, you'd feel like you wouldn't, did, you wouldn't even want to get out of bed. You wouldn't even want to stand up. In the same way in our spiritual lives, if we go without the Bible, we feel weak, we feel tired. But it gives us the strength that we need today. And it's amazing. Oh, it's so amazing. Because there are so many times when I am in desperate need of God. When I have a very specific need in my life. And I open up and I start to do my devotions and boom! There's God's Word speaking directly to that need in my life. Directly to that need. Going through so many different times of my life where I needed to do certain things, where I needed to trust in Him, where I needed strength from Him, where I needed joy from Him. And you open up the Word of God and there it is because it's alive, because it's active, because God is able to speak to us through it. And it gives us exactly what we need for today. But it also gives us hope for tomorrow. You see, we know that because of God, because of what He has told us in His Word, that nothing that happens in our lives is an accident. Or nothing that happens in our lives is beyond God's control. We know that God still stands. We know that God is moving. And you see, it's so easy to get worried about tomorrow. It's very easy to get worried about what's going to happen in the future. There was a big portion of my life right after we had Hannah. It's my first child. And I remember the first day we brought her home. You know, normally it's a joyous time to bring your baby home and bring him into the house. I was terrified. I was a nervous wreck. I thought, what was it, our, a one week appointment? I thought she had died in the back seat. Two weeks appointment. Her head was kind of tilted over. I was like, she's dead. And Becky was like, calm down, she's fine. I blew in her face. (laughs) And I I struggled for (laughs) several weeks. I struggled with several weeks because every time I looked at this frail baby, I thought, God, why did, you, why did you give me this baby? I'm not ready. I'm not equipped for this child. I can't handle this today. What happens tomorrow? Well, and I had all of these worries and fears and thoughts and all of these things that circled around the what ifs. And I was so stressed out. And I remember my mom, she brought me this this. Three by five, uh, what are those called? Note cards, thank you. She brought me this three by five note cards with three scripture verses on it. And she goes, Isaac, I think you need this. And I read every single one of them. And every single one of them, my mom hit it right on the head because every single one of those scriptures was about trusting in the Lord. About allowing Him to order your steps. Was looking to Him instead of on your problems. And I sat there and I was like, okay, God, I understand. I understand where you're trying to take me. I understand what you're trying to do. But you see, that's the power of the Word of God is that it gives us hope for tomorrow. That we don't have to look tomorrow and be fearful or be anxious or be worried about what's going to happen, but rather we can stand firm and say, I know who my God is and I know that He is going to see me through. And that's the power that we have in the Word of God. And the last thing that I want us to see this morning is that it draws us closer to His will and to His 
You see, it helps us to align with him. It helps us to put our lives in order to make sure that we are all situated and everything looks right in our life. We just recently moved all of my tools from the garage to a tool shed. I'm very happy about this. Because in, my, in the garage, my tools were everywhere. It was a big space, and I had a lot, to, I had a lot of space. And you'd find, you'd, find the screw gun, or you'd find the screwdrivers over there. You'd find all these other things spread out everywhere. And whenever we were getting ready to move to the, to the, new, to the new shed, when I was getting ready to move it to the shed, I got a little worried because I was like, oh, man, I don't know how this is all going to be. Well, fortunately, my wife is a master organizer. If you don't know this, it's like her, her hobby. It's what brings her joy in life is to organize. Ugh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and so we sat down and we organized everything. She bought totes and we bought all of these things. And I have a place for everything now. Even like the different sizes of screws and nails. They all have their own individual tote. And it's so nice. It's so nice that I don't have to go out to the garage and search for 20 minutes for something that I need. I go out to the, I I ask Becky first, I'm like, where did you put this? And she goes, oh, it's right there. And I go out and boom, there it is. It's like, wow, wow. You see, here's the thing. The word of God helps us to take the mess, the mess of our lives, the mess of everything going around and align it with God's word. Align it with his heart and say, God, whatever your will is, I want to be right there. I want to be lined up with you. I want everything to fall into place. And so this morning, that's exactly what I'm asking us to see is that so many times it's easy for us to just go through life. And especially if we've been saved for a while, we might even get to the place where we think, I know everything. I know it all. Through the Bible, one time every year, at least once a year for the last, I think it's been 12 years now. I started it when Becky and I got married. So last 12 years, I've read through the Bible. And I will tell you something. Every year, almost every day, almost every week, I read something that I've read before, but it's new to me. It's new to me. You see, we should never get lax about the word of God we should never become lax because this is for us today all of these things that we looked at today it gives us peace in troubled times it it gives us promises to stand on it gives us fight against sin, sin and temptation it gives us strength to move through life it gives us hope for tomorrow it draws us closer to his will and to his heart all of those things I'm going to tell you I need every single one of those every single day I need those things in my life that I need Him. And that's why we need to go to the Word of God. That's why we need the Word of God to speak to us. To speak to us. And so what I want to encourage you with is this. 2 Timothy Timothy 3, 16-17 All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped For every good work. For every good work. We need to be equipped. We need to be equipped. 